Hi, Lucy. Hi. Thank you for sharing this time with me today. Can you share something with, with our audience about your story? Yeah. So, um, I was 34 and um, eight years ago, which tells us something about my age. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, was um, kind of feeling tired and feeling kind of a little bit strained and a little bit stressed at work, but really tired and went to the doctor a couple of times and just um, had a bit of a dry mouth and then as the year proceeded, um, sort of a, I began to get bumps in the neck and um, by the end of 2004, basically got sent to a specialist and was diagnosed with nasal pharyngeal carcinoma, which is a form of cancer behind the nose, which was a shock because it was a very rare form of cancer and woman, you know, a woman who was white and, you know, a kid. 34 years old. And 34 years old. It's a Cantonese cancer that a lot of men in their late 70s get. And usually heavy smokers. Heavy smokers. Other risk factors. Absolutely. Everything. So absolutely. for me it was just came out of absolutely nowhere. And, um, it, yeah. It didn't fit the box. It didn't fit the box at all. It didn't fit their box. And, and mm. they were kind of like, they kept on asking me about my heritage and I was like, I have no Cantonese cancer. So yeah, it was it was a pretty full on year. Got diagnosed at the end of the year and then for that kind of cancer you have to have extremely aggressive treatment. They say it's the most aggressive but it's very curable. So um, so I kind of went into that beginning of 2005, had many rounds of radiation, 36 rounds of radiation and chemotherapy at the same time. But unfortunately what it does is, although it's great treatment, is it wipes out your salivary glands. So the side effect of the treatment almost immediately is something called xerostomia, which obviously you know about, being a dentist. Um, I knew nothing about it, never even heard of it, which is dry mouth condition. So, um, yeah, it's a shock suddenly, to the system, isn't it? It's a shock to the system, and you basically have to, well, you have to learn how to eat again. Um, I, you know, spent hours eating, <laughs> getting frustrated and only, you know, being able to eat certain foods, but I, I find now that I can eat most foods, um, but everything has to be done with water and, yeah, so it was, it was full on, full on treatment that ended up with the dry mouth condition. Were you told about this before or during the treatment that this is what's going to happen to you and, and so you were verbally prepared for that? Absolutely. Not that psychologically you were ready for any of this anyway. You weren't ready for the cancer or the treatment or the That's outcomes right. of all that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you have to, to, to deal with a lot of psychological, you know, mm. strengthening yeah. of, your, of your soul to, to overcome all this. Absolutely. But were you verbally told about it by the yeah. um, specialist? So, I mean, you get a, it's a severe dry mouth, you're eating, absolutely. you're talking, everything will, um, will deteriorate basically. Will deteriorate. And I mean, you have mm. a dental specialist as well as a chemotherapist and mm. a radiation specialist. So you have that dental therapist with you throughout, and also a speech therapist, actually, weirdly enough, I had throughout, because it also affects your speech. Um, and so, yeah, you're told from the get-go, really, um, because you have to be, of what the treatment's going to involve. And, yeah, it's, um, it's full on, because basically at the start they said, do you like your teeth? And I thought... They're pretty. They're gonna they're gonna take all of my teeth out, and sometimes that is the case with this oh, treatment. That's um, especially in, old, in an older person with so so teeth. That is the that start is, of the treatment. The start they the cannot treatment. before you even start the chemo yeah. with the cancer treatment. So um, so they said you know you've got good teeth to start with, but we will have to take out eight to make room for the radiation. So they took out um, eight of my teeth oh. in the back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I was very lucky. I've still got. A lot of my teeth. Some some of them are gone now, but I've still got a lot of my teeth. So and they're good looking lucky. ones. Yeah. And they're very strong and, and healthy, which is yeah. really what, what what I'm trying to, to come to now. Because with that saliva, basically everything goes to hell inside the mouth. Your gums dissolve, your teeth dissolve, um, you're in pain, you're in agony. You can't eat, you can't kiss, you can't talk. I wasn't all we're just talking about. about yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that's your situation, this is just the general paradigm that we see. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, it's, it affects a lot of it's things. It's a lot of things. It's personal, psychological, physical, you know, if I can't eat, you know, how, how, everything burns basically. Sure. So when I asked about all these things, and, and you were dealing with a few of them okay, but it was still early days and all that. Absolutely. How did you find that simple advice of just putting baking soda in your water and sipping that all day long, at least if not swallowing it, just rinsing with it? as a way to keep 
your math alkaline because mm. and, and slippery. It was extremely helpful because at the time um, people are trying to, and I'm not just saying this, people are trying to sell you a lot of products mm. and you kind of are told to chew gum and you're told to do this and you're to, told to put a certain powder in your drink and I tried out a couple of things and it just was like, it was all too much to be honest, it was all about overwhelming. But you're really nervous because you've been told that, you know, you see photos of people's teeth rotting like over a year, yes. you know. People, very quick. So, yeah, so I was looking at those photos and obviously with everything else it was like, yeah, I just want to be able to do something that's really simple but that I can do on a daily basis. And so that was really, it was really, really helpful because it was really simple and I thought, well, I can do that and it's not going to cost a lot of money and it's, yeah, it was a simple thing to do. And it's safe. And it's safe, exactly. That's you know there's a right. The person who's gone through such an extreme experience and has no saliva, that's, kind that's, of crazy. A, that, that's an amazing thing. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm not happy at all for what happened to you in the past. This is not to be wished upon anyone. No. But on the other side, mm. I'm happy to know you and know that you're such a fighter that you came out winning out of it. Mm. And now you're pregnant, and congratulations for that yeah, as well. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to be part of this story and being able to help you. This brings us to the also spot products because after the baking soda and all that, that was it. You actually met me at a good time because I was really dissatisfied, extremely dissatisfied with the status quo of what's going on with our profession and with our products and right. everything else. Because two years prior to that, I had two new cavities, brand new cavities in AT that were healthy prior to that. Yeah. As a graduate dentist, as a person who's giving advice to others, as a person who brushes and flosses and does use water toothpaste, that was very upsetting for me. Yeah. I went through this all my childhood, yeah. um, and then as, as a dentist, and I was like, this is not okay. And I see it with other colleagues and other colleagues' children, mm -hmm. as well as the public that we treat, of course. And that's when this whole research process started happening. Why is it happening? How can we recreate balance in that biofilm and that mm -hmm. ecosystem that lives inside of us? Yeah. What tips that balance what to one side, and how can we tip it back to balance? So you actually got me at a good time because I was really in the, in the midst of it to figure out what can we and what should we do that is safe, mm -hmm. that is more effective mm -hmm. than what we're doing now, and that is more long-lasting because we know there's no magic bullets in life. That's right. And I wasn't looking for one either. Yeah. Um, but definitely what we were doing and what's still being given as advice out there is just not working. Mm -hmm. When are we going to seek better? Yeah. What's your experience with that, cleaning with the powder and then the alkaline and the alcohol-free mouthwash? Yeah. and all that compared to what you used to use before, like all of us, and I did that of course many years. Well, I know talking to you about alcohol now, and you know that, yeah, it's not so good. Um, so with the powder, the powder was really good because I knew it was really simple. Mm -hmm. And, and I so just, free, detergent free. Exactly. Irritant, especially when you have a dry mouth. Exactly. So, and also taste-wise, weirdly enough, because with xerostomia, your... It was taste. Yeah, and your taste buds actually get more sensitive because all the different better, you know, all the different places in the mouth that you taste things. Actually, um, a lot of products I've tried are just grotesque, actually, to be really honest. I mean, it shouldn't be that extreme, but they are. It's like you just put it in your mouth and go, oh, that's disgusting. So for me, the combination of knowing that it was safe, knowing that it tasted good, um, yeah, it just seemed really simple. It's again because it was just a little powder that you put on your toothbrush and you didn't eat much. And um, yeah, you weren't going to the supermarket all the time and buy. It lasts yeah, a long shoes. time. The lasts and it a long lasts time, a long time. Yeah. And the mouth rinse is just lovely. It's just just really like it's just light and bright and beautiful. So you've been happy using the products for absolutely. Um, and for took quite them some to, time now. Took them to Italy with me as well. I have to say. So they were good. I mean. <laughs> yeah, they were really good to take away as well. Fantastic, because you yeah. spent a couple of years in Italy, haven't you? I did, yes. Yeah. Can you tell us what you were doing? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly ridiculous, but I went off to a physical theatre school which had a large element of clowning and mask work. So for me as well, travelling wise, it was really good that I could take something that I knew that, you know, it was from you, or it was, yeah, that was good, and I could, didn't have to rely on what I could buy initially, so that was really good. Fantastic. And then when you came back, you were doing some amazing charity work and, and helping kids with, with cancer and yeah. giving back to the community and to the society. And I'm actually very humbled and honored to have been part of at least one of those events and contributing to that. But I know you've done a lot more since then. So yeah. well done, well done Lucy. For, Thank you. you know, like I said before, coming out of 
this experience a stronger person and giving back what you could give back. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Lucy, I know that for a fact, this is what we see all the time, people who have a dry math, whether it's because of full-on what we call extreme xerostomia because their glands have been knocked out by radiotherapy, or they have what we call Sjogren's syndrome, where it's an autoimmune system that attacks the uh, salivary glands and the yeah. lacrimal glands, so you don't have enough tears, and right. don't have enough saliva, which means dry, irritated eyes and dry irritated mouth all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you had experiences with chewing gum that yeah, starts absolutely. to get quite tiring? Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, part of the radiation is it does affect the jaw, and you get something called tismus, which mm -hmm. is, is basically you can't open your jaw yes. as well as other people. Um, and so it does create damage, obviously, mm -hmm. in the jaw. You don't want to overuse it. You don't want to overuse it. And for me, I'm a teacher, so I'm talking all day. So it's, it is tricky. And they did say use chewing gum at the start, but often the chewing gum either dissolves into a great big massive is the best way to describe it in your mouth or it tastes really bad and also my jaw would get really really sore to be honest and I just I just mean this is too tricky absolutely and so that's why I, I, I don't like chewing gum and I would never make chewing gum as part of our also spa range although it's a good delivery system for minerals for example the use of it is inappropriate basically for long-term use and we're, we are talking about long-term daily absolutely. multiple times a day use yeah and that's how we came up with the um, chew and go dental tap. And the point of them is they are saliva stimulating. They're, they're meant to, to stimulate saliva with what's in them, all the natural ingredients in them, and then provide mineral for, for the teeth and attack the bad bacteria, balance the bifurcum at the same time while pressuring your breath. Mm. You've tried them just for the last two weeks, so they're actually brand new anyway. Yeah. What do you think of them? What have you? Well, for me, they're just really simple because you don't have to chew and chew and chew, they just, they're, they're, they're um, I don't know how to describe it, but they're little, they just um, dissolve really quickly and it's a really nice sensation, it's not like little bits stuck in your mouth that you have to swallow to get rid of, they just dissolve away, um, yeah, and just, it's it's a really good taste as well, again. It freshens the breath? It freshens the breath and it actually goes through to the nasal passages, which is always an added bonus, yeah, and especially if you are dehydrated, you've often got a... Uh, horrible taste in your mouth anyway, like, you know, I don't tend to have it luckily because I get keep hydrated, but I know you can get metallic or just a taste in your mouth all day, and so it's lovely to have those, you know, throughout the day. And you know they're safe, they're actually That's right. they're prebiotic um, right. for, for the mouth and yeah. for the cuts, because I know you'll swallow it, it's meant to be that way, yeah. so it's not just safe, which is important, it's mm -hmm. actually prebiotic, it sets up the stage for the good bugs to grow in the mouth and in the guts, and for the bad bugs and the fungus to be suppressed, so yes, they yeah. can't take over. So get rid of the weeds while fertilizing the glass. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this with us and my nice smile. Yeah. Because you have a wonderful smile. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this with us.